Death and Entertainment Post Mortem. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to Postmortem number three. Oh my god, is it already number three? Already number three. If you're not familiar with what our postmortem episodes are, they are the follow-ups to previous episodes where we discuss things, you know, new evidence that may have come out or updates. Yeah, updates, things we may have missed. Uh, this one is a follow-up to our Broadrisode. <laughs> With Matthew Can you Broderick. explain what that is? <laughs> <laughs> the famous Broad Risso. Yeah. yeah. One of our earliest episodes, uh, we discussed Matthew Broderick taking a trip to Ireland with his uh, girl, Jennifer Gray, and their BMW and Jennifer's nose went through <laughs> two people from Ireland, killing them. Her nose killed two people. Yeah. Um, and-, and Kyle, during the episode had not heard about this nose job. So he thought that you That we're just I, intentionally just going after her nose. There were a lot of nose jokes that I did not jump in on because I felt bad. Because I didn't know that she actually got a nose job. Yeah. And it, that it was a big thing. It was like a fucking, for some reason, a worldwide phenomenon. Yes. Yeah. We'll, we'll go in the, in the weeds in a little bit we here. But it really was. We weren't just picking on her for her bab- having a big nose. It's just funny to think that Kyle thought we were heartless. Yeah. I know. He's I'm like, like hey. whoa, 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 fellas. Like, yeah. Stay away from the nose. <laughs> yeah. He's like the he's like the kid in like an after school special. Like, hey, hey, guys, let's relax on Timmy. Her nose didn't do anything <laughs> to you. Yeah. I'm the good guy. I'm better than you. (laughs) So this uh, (laughs) this follow up is going to be mostly based around a book that just came out, written by Jennifer Grey, which is what her biography or autobiography or memoirs, memoir, autobiography, yeah, all the above, autoerotic memoirs, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) <laughs> she's a crazy person. <laughs> yeah, it seems like she was surrounded by crazy and it made her crazy as well. I know. Well, she's just like a crazy New Yorker, which I kind of like that. I kind of like the w- the way she talks is crude and crass. Yeah. I kind of I kind of like it. I respect it. I respect it. She's very <laughs> forward and direct. Yeah. yeah. She's a dame. Yeah. She doesn't dance around shit. She'll just like hit it right on the head. Yeah. Yeah. Right on the nose. Okay, Kyle. <laughs> Too much. Alejandro, is he being a jerk here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, we're turning the tables on That's you. a little too on the nose. Hello. Uh, on the cartilage. We'll talk about that soon. Um, so where do we start, Where Mark? do we start with this? Well, look, as Kyle was saying, this big book just dropped earlier in May of 2022 here and she's kind of doing the press round and talking about it and stuff in, you know... Alejandro was good enough to clip a couple of the audiobook excerpts of this book of hers in which she had a lot of things to say that kind of touched on the broad Rosota, as Kyle says it. Yes. Uh, the, the, the accident that they got into, as well as kind of the backstory of the relationship with Matthew and her, um, her parents, his parents, um, a lot of other things. Um, both of their careers and how they were affected by this bad accident and yada, 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 and so on and so forth. So uh, the big thing that that jumped out at me right away from one of these audiobook excerpts was uh, her talking about how much she hated Matthew Broderick. Yeah, that's not, insane. He not hated, but like he's a fucking asshole, pretty much. The, 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 the example. She made this movie, Dirty Dancing. Everyone knows, worldwide phenomenon, made her a fucking international star. He watched the movie with her at a screening somewhere, and at the end of it goes, don't ever make me watch that fucking movie again. Oh, my God. Because I don't want... I think he's getting in his mind to go back to the Bryn Hartman, Joe Rogan thing that Patrick Swayze is going to be stuffing his girlfriend. Uh, That was his claim, like... What you want to make me jealous over here? Maybe you know what? 
maybe she was, maybe she wasn't. He's but he's fragile. But he's also egos. fragile. Yeah. 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 But a, compare Matthew Broderick to Patrick Swayze. One is like this. Matthew Bro- this hunk. Swayze would fucking destroy him yeah, in one move. This muscular <laughs> this hunk. Is, this is the dark, the Black Hog. What, no, what, <laughs> what was that movie he was in? Black, black Dog. Dog. Yeah, oh. yeah. Oh, you're talking about the uh, Israeli Black Cube. Hello. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got Matthew Broderick, the skinny, yeah. pale, you know, he's Broadway like, actor. He's like if, if Woody Allen was Irish. <laughs> <laughs> and and somewhat good looking. It's, oh, yeah. <laughs> Without true. the nose. <laughs> Without the nose. Yeah, we'll get to the nose in a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, I think. So they, they start dating. They met on Ferris Bueller. Yes. Um, so yeah, her and uh, Broderick. Matt, Matt Broderick met there, obviously. She has a very small part. She plays the sister, Jenny, who's a real asshole. Yeah. I don't know how close to, the, to her personality that is, but. Um, but yeah, this book had a lot of things come out. Um, one, another thing that jumped out to me, I don't know about you guys, but the Christopher Walken portion. Yeah, her shorts were uh, distracting him. Well, just to, just to give some back. D- distracted. Yeah. Oh, uh, I, I, I can't focus on my lines. <laughs> I can see your leg. No, what happened was they were both working on a movie together. Christopher Walken, who she said was one of her favorite actors. That's a red flag. Whose favorite actor is Christopher? He's great. You know, he's a wacky character. Well, after the deer hunter and all that. That's I like saying see. Nicolas Cage is your favorite actor. You know, <laughs> well, he's crazy. He became a parody he's of himself crazy. later in his career, but he was taken very seriously early on. Okay. And one quick connection in the Mariska Hargitay, or wait, excuse me, Jane Mansfield episode. Yes. Sure. That accident happened near Biloxi, correct? Yes. Well, this was on the set of the movie Biloxi Blues. Hello. And Neil Jenna- Simon, yeah. Jennifer Neil Simon joint. was visiting Matthew Broderick on set and- Felt like she wasn't wanted. Mm. Yeah. Well, she was wearing very short shorts on set. Who and, wears and, short shorts? And director Mike Nichols came up to her and said, hey, um, so Christopher's having trouble with his lines, which I feel like he had all the time. Mm-hmm. He was just not a strong actor with it when it come, came to lines and stuff. <laughs> not a strong actor. Yeah, Isn't yeah. he considered one of the great actors <laughs> of his generation? But he looks not like to Mark. He looks like he just fumbles around Frankenstein, like you know, he doesn't really understand lines sometimes, and he doesn't understand how to save people who are drowning. Wow! Well, whoa! <laughs> Spe- crossover <laughs> moment. Um, <laughs> well, when you mention walking in Diepod World, yeah, you, you know he's yeah. got a big part in that. He's got a past. He's got a past. He's got a history here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, we've 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 said that name many times. We've done that impersonation many times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, Mike Nichols asked her to leave because her short shorts were distracting, and but later on, she uh, obviously a big fan. She actually ran into him at an airport bar, and uh, she said they got along together like. Ketchup and French fries. Yeah, and they had a great time together. Who knows what you know? If anything came about that, yeah. But you <laughs> went know, went together like boogers and noses. <laughs> <laughs> and she could store a lot in there. Believe me. Yeah, you can't say in her case noses and faces yeah. because yeah. she threw hers away. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> she had a warehouse in there. Um, <laughs> another thing that stuck out to me was Broderick's mom. <laughs> Calling um, Jennifer Gray's dad a derogatory word for a homosexual to her face. Yeah. Says, hey, your dad's an F. A G. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Don't you know your dad's a. And she goes, and everyone knows that because. Everyone knows it except for you, she said. To give some backstory, her, uh, Broderick's parents were old sh- uh, show business people in plays and, you know, acting. Her, his dad was big on TV and stuff before he passed away. Um, so Jennifer Gray's family is like multi-generational history in show business. Yeah. Her, f- her father, <laughs> I guess, was, you know, he swung both ways. And her grandfather and I think even his father were all in American show business at some in some way. Yeah, it goes back to vaudeville. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> earlier. Yeah. To and, the Greek Roman times or something, but yeah. Yeah, and the dad in question that we're talking about, Jennifer's dad, Joel Gray. He won an Oscar for playing the MC in Cabaret, yeah. a role that he originated on Broadway. Mm-hmm. And he beat out all the cast of The Godfather that year. That's so crazy. It was a big shock. Yeah. Because Godfather won everything pretty much. 
except for that Oscar. Wow. There was a sweep minus that. But yeah, he talented guy, I guess. Very I, I, ne- I never guy. saw this movie, but I wonder if Cabaret? The, if uh no, I never seen Cabaret up. No. Oh really? Have no. you? Oh, Jesus. Heard of it. Yeah, I know it exists. Never seen it. It exists in the world. It's a good movie. It's Bob Fosse. Yeah. And it's it's got the dark. Under it's funny. I've tone. seen I've seen the Fosse movie. I've seen the the like Sam Lenny. Rock, the Sam Rockwell uh, movie. Oh, about, about Fosse. About Fosse. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, it's a dark movie because it's about the Nazi regime yeah. overtaking. I know Liza Minnelli was like the big. She did it the best. Yeah, it, it's a really. Oh, I want to say creepy movie. When you think of it, you probably think it's this broad musical, and it's really not. It's a, it's dark, a really musical, dark, yeah. disturbing movie. And in some ways, I think the MC that Joel Gray plays, he's a Nazi himself. Yeah. And it's just about the slow rise of the Nazis. So, oh, wow. But it, it makes sense. I don't know. It, it, people were painting them with, with him with the... He's a gay guy, right? Thing. But so, but the, it, it is a very gay part. It's it's the most showy, Alan flamboyant Cumming. part it, that you can play in the movies or Broadway. Yeah, basically. he's like in drag, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's basically drag. Yeah, it's because Jennifer know, Grey says in the in her book, she said uh, like his perfectly tapered makeup and his uh, perfect high kicks weren't. Because he was gay, it was because he's a very talented man. <laughs> okay, well let's let's dive right into that because she also found out later that her dad came out at the age of eighty two as a gay man. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow. <laughs> so not even banging, bisexual. Was he banging Daddy Wagner? Ah, <laughs> we're not prepared to make that. Yeah, connection we're not yet. crossing over everything here into other. Into the <laughs> I'm just trying to connect. Natalie Wood. Yeah. So yeah, I mean. But that doesn't change anything about how it, it terrible was, Matthew it, Broderick's it mom is. It was very is. crude no. and shitty the way she said it to her. And Jennifer Grey seemed to think, like, she just wants me away from her son. Because mm. wasn't Broderick's mom, like, on her deathbed when she was saying that? She was very ill. Yeah. yeah she was old as shit. But, and, like, this is, like, her dying, what she wants people to remember. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. Your last dad's word. a queer. Your last word. Your dad is a queer. Everyone knows but you. Your dad's a queer. She's from Quincy, Massachusetts. Yeah. Th- yeah. That was a polite <laughs> way to phrase it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Her, she said the F word. Her, yeah. Yeah, she said the F word. And, you know, I think people said it more freely back then. But um, And we'll get into this in the Ireland part, I'm sure, but... His dad was already dead. Yep. And, you know, was ill. And so I think that says a lot to Matthew Broderick's character yeah. at this time. Because, you know, he's a young guy and he's got a sickly mom. His dad died when he was very young. That that has got to affect you. Yeah. Well, let's let's get right into the the Ireland incident. Okay, let's with, do it. Which is the main reason why we actually did the episode in the first place. Because in uh in 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 1987 Matthew Broderick may have been driving on the wrong side of the road we don't we don't know he Jennifer was. says no Jennifer oh, says really? no yeah she it, says it in the thing she goes oh. people ask me all the time well to 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 finish my thought uh for the for the listeners uh Matthew was drive I think driving on the wrong side of the road and killed a uh a mother and her daughter and there is a lot of ambiguousness as to whether or not uh, Matthew was who regular American driving on the, you know, the left side of the road is very, um, bizarre for someone like that. Yeah. Well, she says in the, um, the audio that I listened to, she goes, um, you know, people ask all the time, were we drinking? No, not at all. Yeah. Uh, did Matthew drive on the wrong side of the road? Not for a second. He, well, he was there used was, to driving in Ireland. There was interrogators. And then she goes, people ask me, so what did happen? And I say, I don't know. I wasn't looking up. So it's like, how the fuck would you know if you're on the wrong side of the road and or how, not? And how would you not not know you were on the wrong side of the road? Yeah. If someone was driving it with me, you know, and I was, you know, aware, conscious, knew what was going on. Yeah. I would know what fucking side of the road we're on. Yeah, no shit. And she's selling this fucking story in the audiobook that she was head down going for tapes. Yeah. For she was changing from. You choose a Joshua tree 
to some uh, nice 19- sounds of Soweto. Sounds of Soweto. <laughs> some South what African music. When you Google that, sounds of Soweto. Yeah, it's like very like didn't didn't you know? It's like like Graceland without Paul Simon. Yes, it is exactly that. Asama Bonganga. Let's hear us a little bit. <laughs> let's let's get a taste. Thirteen years ago, in 1986, Johnny Clegg with Nelson Mandela. We don't need the setup here. So it's like the Lion King music. Okay, cut it, cut it. (laughs) So that's what they're listening to when this crash happens. And she claims um, she put the tape in, and then that's the reason why she couldn't see anything. But wait a second, if you had just put the tape in, she talks about the accident happened. The music's still playing after the accident happens. So you already put the tape in. So why can't you see the accident in front of you and see what side of the road Matthew Broderick song? Because the investigators knew he was on the wrong side of the road. And to rewind it just a little bit, the reason why she said he was so knowledgeable about driving in Ireland is because her his dad before he died, obviously. Yeah. He had a place in Ireland. His dad was from um, a county that was, picture the northern part of Ireland where Northern Ireland is. Mm-hmm. Before it becomes the British part of Northern Ireland, there's a little part on the left side on the west coast of Ireland where they had like a big family spread where they went for Christmas and like a mm-hmm. lot of holidays and stuff. With the Broderick family, Matthew included, would go back there a lot. And in the original episode, we weren't 100% sure why they were there in the first place. Yeah, I was like, what are they doing there? Because I knew he had an Irish background from the dad, mm-hmm. not the mom so much. Um, but, but it turns out he has this place This there, place there, And yeah. when they went to visit it, everyone in town knows him. Yeah. You know, he's like royalty there. Yeah, he's like... But knowing him not from just the movies, but also from growing, from growing up and growing going up to this there, place, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is that's why he knew how to drive there. Like he's no, he knows this place allegedly. Yeah, but but he also doesn't because he asked a cop for directions, and the cop said your directions are fucking plain right. stupid. Well, knows <laughs> how to drive on the the Irish side of the but road, but also allegedly. I, right. I I don't believe she paints his picture like he was like the fucking. The king of Ireland or something. Yeah. You know? She even says, I like the corduroys he was wearing or something. She's more concerned about the corduroys yeah. that he's wearing getting torn than the two people that he killed. Yeah. Yeah, who she just glosses over. Uh, our our seatbelts saved our lives. The uh, the mother and the daughter weren't wearing them. Yeah. Well, let's like, listen okay, to clip. Blame them. Yeah, let's listen to clip one then. I took the Sounds of Soweto cassette out of its hinged plastic case and was sliding it into the tape deck when I heard Matthew scream. As I jerked my head up, I saw something completely filling the windshield, and there it was, like a sledgehammer. My nose. The sudden and stunning force of impact. (laughs) Not that big. Then eerie silence. My forehead stung. My head must have been whipped into the dashboard. There was a searing sensation on my chest where I later learned the seatbelt had burned off the top layers of flesh below my neck. I spit out a mouthful of what I thought were my broken teeth, and glancing down was relieved to see on my sweater instead a spray of translucent, perfectly formed cubes of safety glass. Wait, what? She sure was thinking a lot. What was she going down there to do again? Exploded. I looked over at Matthew. Unconscious, his bloodied face slumped forward onto the steering wheel, his chin split open like a Pez dispenser. South African music started to play. So this sounds of Soweto. Sounds of Soweto. (laughs) Sounds of Soweto. I struggled, punching at the buttons to silence the bizarre soundtrack of this nightmare. That's what she's worried about. It was alive, but this was bad. (laughs) You think? This music was bad. (laughs) Yeah, she... Matthew's like, turn it off. (laughs) Get out of the car. Yeah. So, yeah, that she's painting this picture. She's got the tape. So, she's basically almost saying, like, she's so focused on the tape still, even after she puts it in. Yeah. So, she doesn't see what went on. I think that's, I think this, um, the detective pressed her, like, he asked the same question over and over. 
And she even says that later on in the excerpt saying, you know, he kept asking me the same questions because they knew some a lot of detectives, you know, they know exactly what they want mm-hmm. to get. They they saw where the cars were. They knew what happened. Mm-hmm. He fucked up. He was in the wrong lane. It happens. Yeah. But they wanted to get that out of them it, once they found out they couldn't because Matthew's lawyer was in town. Matthew's lawyer came over, and he's the one that told her not to go to any of those premieres in L.A. and New York for Dirty Dancing. Right. But he also- But he said, get out of town. Get out of here. Yeah, get out of here. Yeah. Get that nose out of here. <laughs> but but he, he also said, D- don't say anything to these- Like, she was coached, but she's not saying that in the book. They were like, no offense, Jennifer, but the media is being a little too nosy. Hello. You got to avoid them. <laughs> get yeah. that schnoz out of here. Um, and then we have one more <laughs> clip of the accident. Yeah. The smell of acrid burning metal, like bumper cars, and the temperature so hot, like we were in an incinerator. Hmm. So much smoke, I thought we were about to burst into flames. I knew I had to get Matthew out. I opened my door, ran out to his side to pull him out of the wreck, but couldn't open his door. There was no longer anything that resembled a door to be opened. He's what lucky was once a door was a blackened crush of metal wrapped that, around his frame. That the car didn't explode or something. I looked up and down the deserted country road for any sign of a car, but there was nobody. Nothing. No people. Except and for one other smashed car. And yeah. a road Except for two in people both directions, that are dead. They call as far victims. as the eye could see. <laughs> Green and peaceful and quiet. Except for that well, family. She, she also took, she said it was her idea to get the BMW because Jason Robard said it saved his life one time getting a BMW. He said, always get a BMW. Right. Yeah. And uh, they did. Uh-huh. And she, that was her idea, she said. So she saved their lives. Mm-hmm. And those other people who died, it was their fault. Yeah. Very nice of her. <laughs> 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 um, and I'm going to do more than she does in the book. What? I'm going to name the victims. Yes, please do. Anna Gallagher and her mom, Margaret Doherty, yeah. were killed. Yeah. And this memoir, I don't know if it was because of the legality of it, but Jennifer Gray not one time mentions the names of the victims. You think it's yeah. because she of- says the mother and the daughter. Do you think she consulted a lawyer and that they told her to do that? It doesn't make sense why she wouldn't mention the names of the victims, nor does she reflect on, oh, I often think of those lost lives. She doesn't seem that concerned. She's more concerned about the corduroys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just strange to yeah. not really. Yeah, it's all about her or Matthew when she talks about it. She's very invested and concerned about herself. Still, yes. the, the, yeah, she was screwed over. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, not, she got a raw deal, raw deal, like in Hollywood in general. Also, mm-hmm. like you know, we'll go in the no- we'll go into the nose job thing in a minute, which yeah. is absurd. Um, so right now we're in the hospital. Yeah, and Matthew and his lawyer are begging her not to go to the Dirty Dancing premiere in Los Angeles because they're scared she's going to say something she shouldn't, which is. Couldn't be worse timing. Yeah, a week later, and she, you know who she blames? Her good old ace in the hole for doing bad things. Her mom. She said, "My mom said I had to do this." Oh, to go to the premiere. To go to the premiere. Right. And so she did it. Mm-hmm. Why not? You gotta go. And then Brian Gumble, the 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 nice oh, okay. guy he is, he d- he totally disregards everything her publicist says, and well, that's Matthew's absurd. lawyer says, and goes. Uh, so I heard uh, you were in a little accident <laughs> two weeks ago with uh, Matthew Roderick. What happened with that? And then at the end of it, at the end of the interview, he goes, I had to ask. Sorry. You know. It's true, though. She was. She should be dead. And you're not supposed to ask about something that just happened. I know. Less than two weeks ago that was a fatal car wreck. That's a little more important than dirty dancing. But she she addressed it by saying, I can't talk about it. Yeah. So I guess she got away with that. And they were afraid that she would fold and just say, Matthew killed two people. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're investigating him at this point. Yeah, it's still an open investigation. He's on $5,000 bail. 
Mm-hmm. Like it's not small potatoes here. Like it's still possible he's going to be charged. And like yeah. I think the reason why he brought his lawyer over, obviously, and his mom came over right away. Her and the mom did not get along. Still. Um, oh yeah, that was also could, a fight could, they had before the accident. She yelled because. Jennifer's just crying the entire time, and the mom was like, and Jennifer goes, I want my mommy, and uh, Broderick's mom goes, how do you think that makes me feel? Right. And she goes, <laughs> she, she goes, she barked at me. <laughs> like, and that was a fight before the accident. That's why they were on their way to Dublin. Yeah, Jennifer because- Gray was pissed that Matthew, the mama's boy, was going to bring his mommy to Ireland, yeah. and Jennifer Gray's like, screw that. I don't want to hang out with your mom. She goes, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> <She's> like, <laughs> so then their plan was get to Dublin, pick the mom up, and Jennifer was going to jet out to yeah. the Dirty Dancing. She was taking out of Shannon Airport, which I've flown into and out of a very nice airport. That was another Shine. thing in the episode your story of the very strange trip Inter- interaction you i had with my uh my distant family yeah, yeah. your supposed family yeah, we, we can't have you michael they couldn't host you <laughs> yeah from uh from hey stay as long as you want to we can't have you michael <laughs> which is not my as soon room. as you get there not my name yeah as soon as i get there that's the welcome wagon <laughs> you got the irish goodbye as soon yeah. as you showed up i yeah. got the irish hello goodbye <laughs> <laughs> barely a hello <laughs> but yeah th- th- this is actually a very different part of ireland but the you know the people, you know, whatever. I don't know. Yeah, uh, no comment. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it was, it was very strange the way she kind of laid out all the facts here. Um, it was funny, at, not not funny, but it was hilarious. It, it was it, peculiar. It was very, as you could consider this happening. I I could see this happening. She said she started getting prank calls saying, I'd like to sign up for the Matthew Broderick driving school and it was Baba Booey. No, it was not Baba Booey. It was uh, Stuttering John from Howard yes. Stern. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They were making prank calls on her answering machine. <laughs> and one was just screeching car tires. Oh my God. I'd like to sign up for the Matthew Broderick driving school. <laughs> She did make a point to say, like, back then it wasn't the Howard that I so I know. revere today. I know that's oh, true. Oh, God. And that's what, who, she just wants to get on to promote her book. I know. Yeah. No yeah. She's opening the door. Please let yeah. me on, Howard, because I know you have a huge. Oh, for sure. Because I think he's kind of fascinated by her, too, because totally randomly, I came across a Sandra Bernhard interview on YouTube from the Howard Stern show. Yeah. And then he started t- talking about asking her, hey, I saw on Twitter you were saying you're good friends with Jennifer Gray. He's like, what's up with that lady? Is yeah. she insane or what? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, I saw you on Jennifer Gray. <laughs> bubba booey, bubba booey, bubba booey. So at least uh, a few years ago, he would have had her on, I'm sure. Wow. She's She's wild, though. At some point, she goes... After the accident, like when she was thinking of leaving and she's like, do I like this guy? Do I want to break up with him? Is this over? She said she looked at him and then like he had like the innocence of like a person that was just like severely damaged and needed help. She said the asshole was gone when I looked at him, like meaning he was a total asshole before. Wow. Yeah. It wasn't just walk in being distracted by her short shorts. Yeah. I'm Biloxi Blues. He was seeing Helen Hunt at the same time. So he didn't want Jennifer Grey hanging around. Oh, yeah. I talked about that in the original You one. did. Yeah, that's right. And that's true. She verifies it in the book because he kept on seeing Helen Hunt. Mm. Yeah, that's right. And he wanted her out of the picture, so that's why he brings in his mom or something? Uh-huh. That's a good move. Yeah. It's a great move. <laughs> yeah. Well, after, um, after all this, she leaves... They break up at some point. They break up, yeah, about about a year later. Yeah. And incidentally, he wanted to marry her. Really? And proposed, gave her a ring, and it all happened very fast. But then she found out shortly after he was still seeing Helen Hunt wow. at the same time. So then she called up Helen Hunt and said, he's all yours. I'm out of here. Wow. <laughs> and in less than a month, she met Johnny Depp. Yes. Yeah, I was just going to bring that up. He proposed to her in less than a month. So that's her thing now. She says, in one month, I was engaged to both Broderick and Depp. She called it a bonfire. A bonfire. Yeah. And the name of the chapter in that book is called Mrs. Broder Depp. (laughs) Is it really? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) She she eventually broke up with Johnny Depp, and then she Mm -hmm. eventually met 
what would be your husband, Clark Craig. But I wanted to bring up the nose job. Yes. Because we talked about it. Kyle was a little skittish about it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it defined her life so much. It was crazy. Because uh, after Dirty Dancing, her quote, I was America's sweetheart. Okay. Um <laughs> <laughs> she, she, mean, was, she was up there. She, she was well known. You know, she was in a movie. She, she was, was an a, actress. She was a person. Yeah, I was American. The, American she just so. declares that in her own biography. Yeah. Okay. I existed. <laughs> <laughs> America's sweetheart. <laughs> her and Glenn Close from Fatal Attraction. So her. Yeah. Mo- it's it's debatable <laughs> whether or not it was her mom's idea or her idea to get a nose job. Well, apparently it was in the family. Joel Gray had gotten the nose job too. Yeah, because if you see him, he has a very small nose. Well, her mom would say small gay nose. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, that's that's Matthew Broderick's mom, so it's okay. Yeah. You're, you're attributing that quote to her. Which yes, is exactly. A, which is accurate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but. <laughs> Yeah, but, he, so he could sniff around the club better. Yeah, yeah. open up the, the yeah. nostrils. Yeah, the back rooms, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's like the guy from Police. Michael Winslow. <laughs> Bing bong. This is a, our family-friendly show here. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I wonder if he met Jeffrey Jones on the set of yeah. Ferris Bueller. Yeah, where does he play? It to, I, he's not mentioned in the book at all. No, <laughs> she stayed away from that one. <laughs> um, so anyway, her mom would use the quote, "When in an emergency, break glass or break nose." That would that was the family quote about when or whether or not that you get a nose job. She was getting tired of just getting cast as Jewish girls all the mm-hmm. time. From upstate New York, whatever, from Dirty Dancing. People just wanted that. So she got a nose job in order to expand her, like, casting options. Yeah. Um, She got one small nose job at the end of the 80s. She did. Well, yeah, she she said, I like my bump. That was her big quote. Mm. And her mom was like, no, you got to get this done, says Jennifer Grey. Who the fuck knows? So she she got one done. And then, you know, her doctor was like, you actually should get this done because you're like 20 percent of your breathing is like being cut off because you have a devi- deviated septum mm-hmm. and <laughs> and you had uh, no tip on her nose. That's what the doctor said. So she got one <laughs> and then everything. Well, she's on the set of that movie, too. Yes. She got the she got the nose job. Then her casting fucking decisions went out. The f- she, she got cast in everything. She got a CAA agent. She was fucking crushing it. And then she got this movie, Wind, that was directed by this girl named Carol Ballard. And guy. produced. Oh, that's a guy? Yeah. I thought it was a girl. <laughs> uh, but it was produced by Francis Ford Coppola. Yes. Yeah. A Billie Holiday, though. That is a guy. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I get it. Um, so, yeah, she, she got this movie, acted in it for a couple of months, and then there was a break in the middle of it. Mm-hmm. And one of the cinematographers came up to her and says, what's going on with your nose? And her her nose job was basically falling apart. What? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was falling apart. What, like shredded chicken or something? Just like, like falling off her face? That, like was, wacko uh, jacko. <laughs> yeah, it was just like, it oh was getting God. fucked up. I don't know if it was literally from the wind of the movie. Cause <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> There's a lot of wind in this thing. <laughs> it blew her nose off, basically. And made it... <laughs> that's possible. The, Who the wind fuck... blew my nose off. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's the next memoir. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so she, got, she went to get it touched up. And then once she got it touched up, it looked totally different. It wow. looked like shit. But she says that it was supposed to just remove that little bump or whatever. The, the doctor's like, "We're gonna, we're gonna saw down like that piece of cartilage." That sounds bad. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then she woke up and instantly, even her, she asked Joel Gray, like, "How bad is it?" And then he's like, "Maybe don't leave the house for a little while." Yeah, yeah. Oh my. And then God. she went to a DGA event. Uh, director Gilds of director. Directors Guild of America. She went to a thing for Lee Grant, this actress mm-hmm. and uh, director, and she said she she looked forward and it was Michael Douglas and she knocked on his back and said, "Hey, it's me, Jennifer." 
And he he gave her a look like, who the fuck are you? Yeah. And why are you talking to me? But she said that she had (laughs) recently been on an airplane with him for hours. Yeah. Conversing, having a good time, like her and walking at the bar. She said they they could feel each other's breath. Yeah. She she talks very creepily about uh, (laughs) about, like married men. What the fuck? (laughs) Yeah. So then she when she says hello, he's like, why are you talking to me? (laughs) Yeah. Wow. So eventually, yeah, she goes up to Francis Ford Coppola's winery. They go to do reshoots, and they're like, you look totally different. And they try to reshoot the movie with mirrors and, like, what? trick shots and stuff. And she showed up in, like, Groucho glasses to break the <laughs> yeah. ice. She's like, isn't That's this hilarious. crazy that I look like hell? Yeah. And uh, they're like, no, we're scared. And then the movie comes out, bombs. Fucking bombs. Wow. Like, negative, like... <laughs> the <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then the director blames her, like, in public. For getting her nose fucked up wow. for for destroying the movie, and it's not uh, the fact that he made a movie that no one wanted to see. It was about like fucking boat sailing. No one gave a <laughs> fuck. I, you know, I think it's supposed to be a good movie, but yeah, you know, you say potato. Um, <laughs> a person in the airport customs actually said uh, when she when she came in one time. I know Jennifer Grey. I've seen Dirty Dancing thirty times. You're not Jennifer Gray. <laughs> and she has she has a lot of weird interactions in airports and stuff. Like, yeah, in, in airplanes. Apparently, the public was just awful to her for a decade. Yeah, saying like she you looked better it. before the nose job, but yeah. you still look good now. Yeah, hmm. she's like, I like I like you better, but you look okay now. <laughs> but she looked more distinct with the with the nose before anything was done. What was more her? It's it was who you are. Yeah, yeah, you know, she fucked it up listening to her mother. <laughs> that, that's that's where everyone goes wrong. Yeah. Well, yeah. mother knows best. Oh! oh! Is this thing <laughs> on? Try the veal. Check, please. <laughs> um. Yeah. So I I don't know. I I don't really know what else to add there. But she did an entire TV series about the girl that got nose job. She played in like, herself in like 2003 or something. No, before that. Like was 98 ish. Yeah, something on like ABC. That. It's like you know, and it that was called. that was the oh my god, that was the pitch though. Like the girl that you know was very famous, and then yeah, it's about like job. writers, actors in LA, and she yeah. plays herself. We have a clip of it. Oh god, let's play it. It's like you knows. <laughs> <laughs> this is my old friend Arthur. Arthur, this is my neighbor Jennifer Grey. Oh, like the actress, Dirty Dancing. You spell it the same way as her. Yeah. I model my whole life after her. She's my idol. Am I missing something? I am Jennifer Grey. The actress, Dirty Dancing. She's doing a dance. You look different. Well, you know, you see a movie once. Oh, I saw it a few times. Oh, ten years ago. No, I saw it again just last month. Oh, on television. No, I saw it in a huge revival. I sat right next to the screen. Job. <laughs> oh. Just one? It sounds like she had that encounter in real life every day. Oh, I'm sure. One thing I also noticed from her her book was when she decided to leave Matthew and go back to L.A. and New York to do those premieres, she talked about she was chain smoking on the flight the entire way back <laughs> <laughs> on the plane. Mm, do you, you notice still that? still smoke then? I guess so. Well, she was on one of those overnight flight uh, Concords that mm. they don't do anymore. Oh, yeah. She was like, I was smoking the entire way back. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Well, she had been through quite a trauma. And she had, uh, I think, an opiate addiction, too, because she talks about... In very, you know, the minutia of detail talking about, you know, going under for the nose job and stuff and how much she liked the drugs, oh, the feeling and the, yeah. feeling and the drugs and how, how comfortable she felt and stuff. And mm. then, yeah. And then she she talked about that a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah. And the recurring injury. Do you have anything on that? Well, her, she went into her doctor and her doctor basically said um, she she's like, am I OK enough to do Dancing with the Stars? She's like. You you shouldn't even be driving in a car right now, or you riding are, in a car. You should be riding in a car, or not not even riding in. A you car. have like millimeters of like your your neck spinal cord left. What if you if you got whiplash right now, you would be uh, paralyzed for life. 
if you got in like even a a, a mild car accident right now, what the you fuck? would be paralyzed for life. Because of the whiplash she suffered, it was an injury they could not detect at the time. And she said she got it from the original Matthew Broderick accident at wow. that time, which was not diagnosed because it didn't come up on the x-rays. Yeah. She she seems to be blaming the Irish healthcare system also. <laughs> Everyone else is at fault here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but they did, like, fuse a piece of her spine and neck cord in order to create like a stronger bond. So it's, it's she's not at, at much as much risk. Wow. And she could do dancing with the stars, which is what's really important in this world. Jesus. Which she won. Did she? Uh-huh. Oh yeah. wow. I think that was around the time that Howard interview I saw. Yeah. And he was commenting like, boy, that Jennifer Grace, she really wants to win that thing. Yeah. (laughs) She's like crazy on that dance floor, like fighting with people and arguing with the judges. She also compared herself to Buzz Aldrin because they had the same doctor or something. She's like, because he he actually was on Dance of the Stars, too. Mm. Yeah, she's right. like, I'm just like him. We have the same doctor. I'm like, all right, well, I think he's more of a national treasure than you. He went into <laughs> space. Yeah, yeah. She was in. He went her, to the moon. Her nose was in space. Yeah. <laughs> you could see her nose from space. <laughs> you got picked up by Patrick Swayze in a movie. <laughs> you were in the movie Wind with Matthew Modine. Yeah. And you yeah. killed it. Yeah, Matthew Modine. Yeah, and you broke the wind. Oh! Hello! Hong Kong. <laughs> I, I, I. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I guess it was her husband, Clark Craig, later on, who was a specialist, uh, who knew a specialist, who told her to go get it checked out, and she did. She also had a uh, what could have been cancer removed from her spine also at that time. So What could have been? Yeah, yeah it, w- it wasn't clear whether or not it was, but she seems to think that it could have been cancer. So take her word for it. Wow. Yeah, and so this book, really, it's the first time you get a lot of these details about what happened in Ireland. Yeah. Because even when we first did the episode, it was unknown a lot of these things. Yeah. Because Matthew Broderick isn't about to say shit about it. Yeah, no. he's going to do another Honda commercial. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we talked about that. The family yeah. was upset because he did this big Super Bowl commercial very with him driving. Very insensitive. He's yeah. never really talked about it very much. There's, re- There were really no details but the, the before biggest, this book. As I was telling you guys before, the biggest detail I can I can grasp is him saying, did I hurt them? Did I hurt them? Um, you know, when he was kind of knocked around and coming out of it, in the driver's seat, mm-hmm. all fucked up, legs broken. You know, he's he's not a hundred percent with it, but he his main concern is, did I do this? Knowing it seems to me, knowing that he was at fault. Yes, and mm. she paints the big picture that the car was out of sight. The second car, yeah. So she doesn't even know there's another car involved until someone tells her. Yeah, she's hospital. like, I don't, I don't, I don't even see another car. Meanwhile, Matthew Broderick, who supposedly had amnesia from it, knows that there's another car involved. She should have asking cri- about it. Crystal clear, known exactly what happened and known where they were at a minimum in the road, other than the left side and the right side. Where the fuck are they? You know? Yeah. So are you saying it's more like sounds of bullshitto? Nice. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's it smells like shit. And uh I have a I have a nose for that sort of thing. Hello. <laughs> so does she. Yeah. Did. <laughs> well, did. At the time. Who knows what she kind of nose she has now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah who knows? <laughs> <laughs> it's not the nose she once had. Yes. No. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's all I got for the postmortem and I think um I th- it was very eye opening. She's a very crass talking person. Like I was saying, I don't mind that. It's an entertaining, but book. she she does dance around the accident. stars. And I yeah, she <laughs> she danced with the stars and dances around the culpability yeah. aspect of the accident. Who's actually responsible? We still don't know really what happened, but yet she described in visceral detail. The moment after impact. Yeah. Well, I, th- I remember the Green Hills and basically Not the every dying people in front of you. Yeah, and everything before that too. She his... remembers his pants. He looked cute in his pants. He had a high-powered lawyer come in, flown in from Los Angeles. Very shady. I'm sure they hired some local 
um, lawyer also to to help litigate the entire thing. Mm. Got some fixes, see? Yeah, fixes. You hear? Um, so I I think they just got, they, he got away with it. I think there wasn't enough definitive evidence to prosecute because he only paid what 175 bucks mm-hmm. in fees he was yeah, he was on five thousand dollars bail and they only got him for like driving recklessly yeah which is very vague but you know if the family could have got something out of him i'm sure they would have i'm surprised they didn't yeah 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 and to this day he's not gonna shine the light on this to offer any more no no details or he, consolation yeah. or anything what's in it for him Online people were starting to talk about it a little more too in the last year mm. because I noticed that, yeah. And just like that, the Sex in the City sequel premiered on HBO, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And basically, everybody hated it, of course. And then who's gonna like that? Sarah Jessica Parker would go on Watch What Happens Live. And then they would make fun of that interview yeah. online. And then they started to say, like, hey, didn't your husband kill two people? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so there was like all this the, bad the, will. The ghost of Stuttering John is still <laughs> right. alive and well. So yeah, the internet was yeah. talking like, "Can we hear more about that uh, accident?" <laughs> yeah. Does your husband still run that driving school? And they're still up to shenanigans. Recently, didn't they shut down like a theater saying they had COVID or something? Matthew and Sarah. They were oh, doing, really? Yeah, they were doing a play together. Oh god! And then they shut down the whole production saying they got COVID <laughs> and all this. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just hang it up at a certain point. I know. You know? I mean, you know, she gave it a go and she never got any good roles after that. And that was it. You know, she didn't, she kind of gave up on acting. Jennifer Grey. Yeah. 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 Well, Clark they, Gregg was a screenwriter and actor. Great character actor. And he still yeah. is. Yeah. Very he, strong. Yeah. In a lot of Marvel movies. Yeah. He wrote What Lies Beneath. Did he? Yeah. Oh. So I think she was happy. Fine when her daughter was born. Yeah. She finally was happy to assume the role that she used to claim she never wanted to be like her mother. Yeah. But then she liked the mother role after all. Yeah. And not to have to work. It didn't make me hate her. It just made me think that she's just a kind of an absurd person to kind of come out with this. But they're not together know. anymore. No. Oh, they, really? Clark, Clark Gregg? Gregg and yeah, Jennifer. I didn't know Clark Gregg's from Boston. Ooh. That is so funny you guys are saying this because you literally had the same conversation and reaction in the original episode. <laughs> really? <laughs> you talk about that they're recently divorced and that he's from Boston. Ah, wow. <laughs> well, hey, there you go. Time flies. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to your own episode, folks. <laughs> it's been so long. I no. know it has. Yeah. And also what came from that episode is Mark's picture with Jeffrey Jones. Yeah, with the... Uh, Another character actor, Jeffrey Jones. <laughs> and we, uh, you can find that on YouTube. No, no we update. riffed on it. No yeah. update on him. Though. In Hot like, Pursuit of a High School Kid. Yeah. It's <laughs> the name of a, <laughs> the video. No update on him. No one knows. No no one hears anything. I'm sure he'll. we'll just hear he's dead one day. Yeah. He... He, we were watching some Zoom video he did to, yeah. talking about his career. Yeah. And they seemed like Satanists. Yeah, it seemed like a a group of weirdos that he was like a master class for bizarros. <laughs> yeah, like like extras from Rosemary's Baby or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like the Satanists for like yeah. you know, that would be involved with uh, the the last podcast we did. And you haven't taken any more photos with Jeffrey Jones? Not that I know. of. Okay, that's good. <laughs> yeah, not with his pants on. Hey, is this one and done? Off, keep, keep it off. <laughs> Fuck him and leave him, right, Mark? <laughs> yep. That's what I say. That's the Jeffrey Jones way. Yes, that's what he. Ta- if he taught me one thing, it's that. <laughs> <laughs> if he taught you a lot of things. <laughs> he taught like, me how to fuck in an airport. Nice. How to bend the right way. Yeah. Hello. Bend it like uh, fucking, bend it like Bueller's principle. Yeah. Bend it like Bueller. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, we talked about that. It, it, <laughs> if there was a history there, you know. Bend it like Jennifer Gray's dad. <laughs> oh, 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 my God. Oh. <laughs> hey, oh. Um, is, uh, is Matthew Broderick's uh, mom here? <laughs> Wowza. I tried to find an update on Jeffrey Jones. Yeah. And instead, I found this old People article from 2002. 
he said, the truth will come out someday. Yeah, it will. The truth will come out and my name will be cleared. I don't know about the latter yeah, part. One of those things yeah. is true. <laughs> yeah. That's so never <laughs> happened. <laughs> We're still waiting for his name to be yeah. cleared. There's, yeah. there's a big book out there that's going to say a lot of stuff about him. To remind everyone he was trying to make child porn. Yeah. Yeah. He was taking pictures of this teenager. Child. Child. I didn't see any of this activity when I when I bumped into him at the airport in Connecticut. Yeah. And then they investigated Pee Wee and That's actually how Mark really broke his pelvis. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't hit by a car. He, he was, was hit f- by Jeffrey Jones's cock. He was oh fucking. <laughs> it was a cock and run. <laughs> I was doing a layover, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Meaning you were laying over the Jeffrey. baby changing table <laughs> in the bathroom. Well, that was, that was like Jennifer Grey in the bathroom. That like she <laughs> that was her excuse why she uh, couldn't see anything. I was in the bathroom. I was in the bathroom. I was in the bathroom. Yeah, doing the uh, tape. So the tape bag. That's right. That's a ticket. Sounds a Soweto. Sounds a Soweto. Yeah, and she knew that was just so bizarre to say sounds of Soweto that yeah. Yeah. you got to believe it's her. It's so unique. Yeah. yeah. That, like, there's that, no that's way. That's a lawyer's trick. She wouldn't make that detail up. Yeah. How could she? And <sighs> one detail about Somebody, uh... the Paul Rubens case. Yeah. Because <laughs> to remind you again. <laughs> The word of the day is kids! <laughs> <laughs> he was investigated because of Jeffrey Jones. Yeah. And so they found a bunch of vintage... Vintage e- European porn! Erotica. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, this kind of looks like child porn. Yeah. And you know what else they found in his stash? The Rob Lowe sex tape. Yeah, right. Yes. <laughs> I swear to God. They what? really found that? Yes. What? Wow. It's funny because I saw like somewhere on like like a vintage Instagram account uh, a picture of Judd Nelson, Michael J. Fox, and uh, Rob Lowe going to the DNC. And they were like in a in a bus or something. Oh my or, God. Wow. or a limo headed over there. Like where it all went down. Maybe all those Where guys, Rob Lowe went down. Yeah. yeah. Maybe this pedophile stuff, everyone's like, pedophile this, pedophile that. Maybe that time is already passed. A baseball bet. Yeah. <laughs> she was 16, Rob Lowe's. Yeah. Conquest, victim, whatever But you want maybe to all the pedophile stuff is, is, behi- is behind everything. <laughs> it's just like that's what people remember or something. I don't know. Jesus. But you were of age with Jeffrey Jones. Yeah. I was uh, a yeah. willing ni- participant. 19 years old, yeah. yeah. You were ready, willing, and legal. I was greased up and ready to go. Barely legal. Yeah. He's like, that's how I like him. <laughs> Although I prefer illegal, really. <laughs> I could fit four of you in my pool. <laughs> it's a heart shaped pool, <laughs> it's a cock shaped pool. <laughs> now that you're in it, <laughs> hold your breath. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord. Yeah, that took a turn. This is weird, wild, wacky (laughs) wacky stuff. Well, Jeffrey Jones, you know, it's hard to be subtle when talking about pedophile Jeffrey Jones. His case, great in Ferris Bueller, though. Still, I mean, the movie still lives in L.A. Not in Inside the Man or the Boy. (laughs) Still lives in L.A. Yeah, not that far from here. (laughs) Address is public information. (laughs) Yeah. We might go, we might add that to the tour. <laughs> yeah, the tour, yeah. Yeah. See if you can spot him. On the right side, ladies and gentlemen, this is a uh, pedophile character actor. It's Jeffrey, Jeffrey Jones. Jones' house. And the sick part is people would still take a bunch of selfies. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And Mark be being in the window. Mark being first in line. Yeah, being like, I recognize that guy. Hello. That's that kid I harassed at the airport one time. And then he sees Mark. He's like, you've grown. <laughs> and I'm growing right now. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Although, really, you're not his type. No. Because you're yeah, a little too older. Old, too old. About 35 years too old. Too long in the tooth. I think he likes, he likes him 10. Yeah, he's like, ah. Yeah. If it was only 40 years ago. <laughs> yeah. If you're only 40 years younger, kid. <laughs> If you're a fetus, you could get fucked by <laughs> yeah. me. You could have the pleasure, <laughs> and we could of do my it my pleasure nine times. <laughs> oh. All right, kids. Well, All that right. was that was something that happened. I should not have said. <laughs> All right, kids. Like, like a movie that happened. Yeah, you always close it out. 
I, I close it out with an inappropriate, ironic, inappropriate but apt, unintentional, yeah, reference. Yep, that's a good uh, postmortem. I think. I think we we got it. Nailed it. All right. It's in the can. Thanks for listening. See you. Don't go dying on us, as Mark used to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.